Well, thank you all for coming down to the basement to uh, watch our panel. Uh, this is a good hall, good size hall. Uh, if anyone can't hear in the back, give us a thumbs up if we need to talk louder, mostly for the panelists. Uh, my name is Justin Shepard. I'm the CTO at the, for the private cloud business at Rackspace. Um, hopefully that's the last time you'll hear Rackspace. I, uh, I like kind of doing these type of panels because I think it's really interesting to hear what private cloud users and cloud users are actually doing with their tech and the challenges that they're kind of facing as they go through migrating and or operating on top of clouds. Um, and so today, we've got three guests that are going to join us uh, and talk through kind of what they're seeing actually running on top of clouds and uh, hopefully share some interesting stories on the challenges that they faced, how they got around them, and give some good advice if anyone is starting to kind of go through and do digital transformation with their companies or they're migrating applications to the cloud or building out net new applications on the cloud. Uh, so I'll first hand off to Simon and let him kind of give an introduction of himself and what his company does, and then we'll go down the road, and I'll call out past that. So, Simon, can you tell us about yourself? Good evening. Good evening. So, um, my name is Suman Mukhopadhyay. I uh, spent about 26 years in the IT industry building production infrastructure for companies like uh, AT&T, AOL, Yahoo, Walmart, and Edgebo. Um, had the privilege uh, of uh, witnessing the evolving infrastructure landscape uh, from dedicated server to virtualization to cloud to infrastructure as service to platform as service to software as service for anything. Uh, today, uh, working on building a cl platform for container orchestration and release automation. Primarily um, built an OpenStack private cloud, which is um, using a commodity hardware. Uh, we didn't take the traditional approach. Uh, built 10,000 plus vCPU, about uh, 300 plus terabytes of storage which gives uh, 55,000 plus IOPS on a commodity platform, commodity hardware platform. Uh, this, takes the work, this workload takes the financial applications like banking, uh, mobile banking, e-banking applications, and that uh, gives uh, enough resiliency uh, and address the security postures that is mandated by the fintech industry. We uh, partnered with uh, Rackspace for, to help us, obviously, to build the infrastructure. And uh, the journey had been very successful so far. Sergey, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hey, guys. Very hard to talk to people who are like, 30 meters away, but hopefully <laughs> I will manage. So uh, my name is Sergey uh, Anikin. Uh, I work right now as uh, CTO at PyDrive. Uh, who knows what, what PyDrive does? Come on, guys. <laughs> OK, we have a supporting group here. So uh, uh, PyDrive is a uh, uh, sales tool, like software as a service. Uh, for small, medium businesses, mostly focused on salespeople. So uh, really know what uh, individual sales uh, people need and, and kind of cater for them. So my previous history, I started uh, in banking sector, worked for eight, hour, uh, for eight years uh, uh, developing business, like internet business uh, banking applications, uh, and then moved to Skype. And uh, I don't know how many of you know, but Skype haven't been using actually any of the servers for quite some time. It was running purely on peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, and uh, after that, I uh, moved uh, to Pipedrive five years ago. Yeah, and uh, I know Justin has some uh, 
questions in his pocket so, pocket so I can uh, later speak about our experiences with cloud at PyDrive. Awesome. Laren? All right. Um, my name is Laren Tangeman. I'm with uh, G Digital. I've been there for 18 months, um, almost two years. It's been uh, pretty interesting. Uh, we're in our little segment, we do um, most of the operations and engineering for GE's uh, OpenStack or, or private clouds. Um, today we support a number of the GE business units, and I think everybody's heard of General Electric. I, I don't know if you haven't. Um, maybe you don't run light bulbs, things like that. Um, but we're, uh, it's a pretty interesting challenge in that a lot of the business units are very large companies in themselves, um, multi-billion dollar you know, sometimes tens of billions of dollars in size. And so um, unique requirements coming from um, healthcare, from lighting, from building locomotives to, you know, uh, making sure jet engines are running appropriately. Um, so it's been, it's been an interesting ride over the last uh, 18 months. Um, prior to that, um, actually spent some time doing architecture um, at a, a company called PeopleSoft for those that have been around for a while. Um, went and worked at Red Hat for a while, and then uh, spent some time with uh, with Justin at Rackspace doing um, OpenStack builds, and then uh, moved to GE. Thank you all. Well, I really do appreciate you all coming out and being able to talk. Uh, so we've got a nice distribution. We've got the United States, we've got Estonia, and we've got Bangalore. So we get a little bit of a mix all over. Um, just real fast to cover. <coughs> All three of you have got OpenStack-based clouds. Perfect. Uh, are we also adopting other technologies? So do we have uh, other private cloud technology stacks? Yes. yes. yes, yes. No and a yes. Public cloud technology stacks? Yes, yes, yes and a yes. Perfect. Uh, so you have the gamut of technology. Um, and so hopefully you've got some good stories on some of the challenges you face. I guess the first question I would start off with for the three of y'all would be, uh, what type of challenges have you faced as you've either built applications on top of cloud infrastructure or you've migrated legacy applications onto a cloud platform? Um, and kind of how have you solved them? And if you're in the middle of solving them, that's okay. You're in the middle of solving it. How are you kind of going about dealing with those challenges um, as you're going through migrating and, and or building? We'll start down on the right-hand side with Laren and then work back this way. All right. Um it's, so one of the surprises uh, GE has actually had, um, you know, been around for a while, so there's a lot of uh, legacy, I guess um, is what I would call it, type of infrastructure and applications that, uh, you know, they've built over many, many decades. And as we start doing, you know, when I joined, GE was very much down the road of digital transformation and it's, um, they're pretty aggressive in how they're handling it. And what I guess my biggest surprise was, was even how aggressive they are at moving this. It's still a very big challenge. Um, there's still a lot of applications that, um, and you know, thousands of applications that were hand-built, custom-built, um, trying to make those cloud-ready, um, whether it's, you know, an OpenStack-based private cloud or an Amazon-based um, public cloud. You know, just the concepts and misconceptions around what cloud is and how they operate and what the functionality is. You know, they, um, most of them have experience with uh, other, like a VMware type of cloud where they expect, oh, you know, live migrations and some of these other things. And when you start talking automation and application resiliency, is, you know, you might as well speak a foreign language to some of these folks. So it's, um, one of our biggest challenges has been um, just trying to get the, or surprises, is the, um, just trying to get people to understand what cloud is and how they can leverage it as they start doing uh, applications, start to migrate applications from a traditional to a more modern platform. Awesome. Sergey? Uh, maybe I before, to be able to relate with you, who is actually working in infrastructure or on infrastructure? Everyone, everyone, almost. <laughs> Otherwise, I would be surprised why you are here. Uh, but yeah, so like when I joined PyDrive, uh, PyDrive was already using uh, private cloud, Rackspace, uh, OpenStack, 
Uh, and before that, I wasn't actually, I was in software development, never actually run an infrastructure team. And, and for me, it was a surprise that there is always a migration going on. So maybe again, a, a short quiz. Who is currently in the process of migrating from something to somewhere? <laughs> You can see everyone is migrating. So the, the <laughs> biggest challenge of the cloud is you have to migrate all the time. To migrate from failed, I don't know, hardware to a new one, or maybe you have failover there. Uh, to migrate from one version of uh, OpenStack to another. Migrate from, I don't know, one public cloud to another. Uh, so I guess that's the challenge of industry. Uh, and uh, how we, uh, we approached this challenge, uh, I think it was part of our bigger challenge of uh, a fast growing business. Like when I joined, we had 5,000 customers. Now we have over 80,000 customers. Uh, so like just in a matter of five years, uh, we had to scale the system and uh, you always run into certain bottlenecks, right? It can be your software uh, created bottleneck. Uh, it can be a bottleneck in OpenStack. It can be a bottleneck in actual hardware, like networking layer. So you always run into some bottlenecks uh, with your current architecture. And that our approach was, let's not wait for the next bottleneck. Let's uh, create an architecture where we can just uh, copy a current setup, which kind of runs well, and uh, deploy another version uh, so that we can run two, three, or five, we call them data centers, but you, some, some call them pods. So we can run as many pods uh, as we want, and the pod size is the size which can serve certain amount of customers without running into bottlenecks. So we worked on this architecture for uh, almost three years. Now we have two data centers, one in US, another in uh, Europe. We solved some other issues like GDPR, G GDPR uh, coming and hitting us. And, and like by the time GDPR approached, we already had our Germany data center with the help of Rackspace. Uh, uh, What's interesting uh, about these pods or running this multiple copies of your infrastructure is that uh, it's not only about the architecture of how you actually serve the customers from different pods, but it's also about how you migrate customers from one pod to another. Uh, and by having this solution of being able to run from multiple ports, being able to migrate customers from one to another, we are also simultaneously solving the problem for migration needs. OK, we need to upgrade OpenStack. We deploy a new pod with new version of OpenStack, and we migrate customers to this new pod, and we shut down the old one. Easy. Simon? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, as part of the cloud journey, I started he investing heavily, building OpenStack private cloud, pretty excited that we want to go in that way, and that's the way. But when I looked at the drawing board, I realized most of my applications uh, are stateful. None of the applications are stateless. They have session affinity. They have colo affinity. The middleware application can't even handle a cross-colo call. The application is not even built uh, today. I, I, I'm, I'm just, it's a discovery that a lot of middleware applications, I found the way they make the query into the database had a very stringent session affinity. And they were not able to, they are not truly scalable for the cloud environment. Moreover, it's my individual opinion, name one database which was built for the cloud. Um, so 
uh, it was it was really uh, something like you are your house is ready but people are not ready to live in we had to build a data access layer which kind of gives a resiliency in the system that the database become cloud agnostic it it we have built multiple availability zones we have mul built multiple redundancies in the system but the database is still sitting in one corner and it doesn't even care to what you have built in your infrastructure so it was a great uh, learning the other thing is uh, i had a traditional approach so when i i wanted to build the open stack cloud i said oh we need aci network and then at the time of implementation um, we realized today everything is software defined you really don't need to invest heavily on the traditional technology which nails you down to a specific set of objects and you don't have any escape route from that so there there was a very interesting uh, challenges that we faced and good learning thanks <coughs> i apologize i'm very dry uh, okay so that was a good one second question um, and that these two kind of go hand in hand so as you're kind of dealing with the challenges of migrating and or building applications um, you've got kind of the challenges that your and your teams are facing but you also have uh, largest surprises and i think Sergey actually may have already answered the large surprise that he found when he was doing it, presented as a challenge. Uh, but Larry and I'd ask, what was the biggest kind of shocking surprise? So not something that you expected. It wasn't something you knew going in. But um, as you know, your teams are building applications and migrating. What was the biggest like aha? Oh my goodness! Uh, surprise that has caught your teams that you've had to kind of solve for. <laughs> um. I think there's many, right? And I'm just I'm trying to prioritize the list of of what they are and and you know, just with the the scale of it, at least at GE we have a bunch of technical um leaders, right? We have CTOs in each of the business units who are responsible for applications and architecture and and those pieces and you have other organizations like the one that I work in there are responsible for hosting those and you have the same type of structure. So you have um, two CTOs um, who are peers who may not have the same priority list or how to, how to adopt uh, or how to get to cloud. Everybody wants to cloud. Not all of them understand what that means. Um, not all of them understand how to get there. And um, you know, as I was talking about, one of the, the biggest challenges is just trying to get people um, to understand what that is, how to get there. Um, what's been nice is that um, there is this mandate to get to cloud, and so it's it's very much uh, you know you're you're talking about you build it and you hope they come. It's kind of that American movie, right? Um, Field of Dreams. We we built this thing and we hope they come. Um, and what we found is that uh, we've had to do a lot of of handholding and educating people about. Um, what it means to come to cloud and that um, it's, you know, just the benefits and the scale and um, what they can do with those, those technologies. And it's, it's slow, um, or it feels slow, but we're actually making really good progress. It's just, um, you know, one of the biggest struggles, the scale. We still have um, mainframe apps that they're like, we need to go to cloud. And it's like, how do you go from mainframe to cloud? That's just different decades worth of technology that you have to figure out. So um, it's been one of our, our biggest hurdles. And then, um, you know, the other one, we're talking about migrations, right? Getting, getting those technologies to come across. Um, some of these uh, application owners actually went out and, um, you know, the term is the lift and shift, where they literally took their, their old platform, they virtualized it, and put it on a cloud technology thinking that there's um, failover and HA and backups and all these different pieces and, and um, they didn't understand that we don't do that. You know, the infrastructure doesn't provide that. 
availability for them or the backups, that it's something that they need to design in their application. And that's been um, one of the hardest challenges for us is just setting those expectations of um, when you come over, you know, we, we don't get engaged. Uh, there's just so many applications that come to the platform. Um, they come across and they don't engage us until they have an issue. And usually it's something um, somewhat catastrophic, right? We lost a virtualization or a hypervisor or something like that. And they're, I'm down, you need to fix it. And it's like, well, where's your automation to go spin this up somewhere else? And like, what are you talking about? I don't know how to do that. So, um, so just the, I think the, the different expectations that people have, the um, kind of the technology gap, the technology debt that's there trying to get some of these legacy um, to the cloud has been a real challenge, and then um, you know the uh, technology stack and, and getting customers what they need has been also difficult. Thanks. So, I'll ask you the same question. So, I had a uh, different surprise as part of the uh, while making a choice for cloud. We were looking for two things: one is cost to performance. And second thing is the reliability factor. It was a conscious decision to go with the OpenStack Cloud using commodity hardware. And I was apprehensive about the performance. So I was really not sure, is this going to give a better? Or at least will it meet uh, match the current performance. So we did a benchmarking of the performance of the CPU and uh, memory. We have uh, AWS, uh, we have VMware, and we have the OpenStack private cloud using commodity hardware. We took the similar instances from every cloud. And uh, what I did is I ran a NQN program that basically where n is equal to 10 on a four threads. I took the similar instances between AWS and the VMware and the OpenStack cloud on commodity hardware. Um, to my surprise, uh, I found that 260% higher performance on OpenStack private cloud we got, which we never anticipated. And then we did another exercise of allocating a block of 50 MB memory, running a cycle on a between AWS, VMware, and OpenStack. Again, to my surprise, uh, I found the OpenStack private cloud was giving me 60% higher performance compared to any one of them. So it was a pleasant ex surprise, of course, uh, but uh, uh, really uh, the kind of performances that we were expecting, uh, it has, it exceeded our expectation. I, uh, when I built it, my apprehension was I will get probably maximum 30,000 IOPS, probably I'll hit. Uh, it almost gave me double, almost 55,000 IOPS it started giving in terms of uh, uh, storage performance. So it's a pleasant <laughs> surprise. That's a good surprise. Most of the time they're bad. Uh, how many times did you end up having to recheck your benchmarks because you didn't trust the data you were getting back? <laughs> it's always fun. Uh, Sergey, I'll give you a chance. I know you kind of answered both of the questions already, but I would let you Yeah, no, I, I have another surprise. Perfect. <laughs> a new surprise. <laughs> uh, I'm, again, it's, it's, um, I'm, I'm always amused. Like our, uh, our company is creating a business software, right? It's fairly simple uh, user features. Uh, and we kind of, we don't want to invest in uh, having a 
like invest into development of infrastructure. We don't want to invest into like creating architecture. There, like there are so many smart people around. We we just want to use already ready-made solutions. Uh, and I'm continuously amazed how uh, like our industry is immature. Like you're looking for a solution, and there are, there is no solution on the market. You have to go and build it yourself. It's like we spend 50% of our time just building tools and building like fairly simple, uh, usable solutions just to be able to build the business software. I'm like continuously amused by the state of our industry. It's never fun when you can't actually make a build versus buy decision. It has to be a build only. Um, all right, we've got about 12 minutes left, so we got two more questions sketched out. Um, as you and your teams have worked through and, and done these migrations, I want to give you an opportunity to beat your chest a little bit. Um, <laughs> Tell me something that you've been very proud. So what's your biggest accomplishment that either the team has done or you've done? Um, something that you kind of have been really proud that you're able to kind of get done on uh, as you're either building the applications or you're migrating to cloud. Uh, I believe I will start with uh, Simone again. Well, uh, so of course uh, the, the Agility that uh, the team built up in the cloud environment uh, was uh, something uh, which is at a cost of the, if we when I compare the total cost of ownership and uh, the agility that we have built in, uh, my team has created the environment. Uh, when I compare it with other choices, it gives a, an upright, uh, just to give a sense, uh, the, we did a rough mathematics. Uh, we saw that TCO is 50% off uh, when it comes to my, our private cloud. At the same time, uh, what happens is we are in a segment where the go-to-market strategy uh, counts every minute uh, because uh, if you consider the fintech industry, the, the releases happen probably every half an hour. And uh, if you are not there, uh, it's not available. I mean, you have lost the opportunity. Uh, same thing, uh, the rapid development that's happening on the AIML market also the features gets released very quickly. The responses counts every moment. So that's where the agility matters a lot. So this particular cloud environment, it created, it matched the rhythm of the agility expectation uh, in terms of the go-to-market strategy. At the same time, the, the bottom line uh, is that the TCO has significantly uh, contained. It's, it's not ballooning, which all the CIO's dreams is that uh, they keep the bottom line uh, diminishing. So I think those two are very proud moments for, for the team and myself as well. Awesome. Sergey? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, like one, one of the moments of pride is definitely being able to deploy our system into multiple uh, locations, multiple clouds. Uh, uh, we have here in, in, in the room people who are actually responsible for that. I mean, I'm very happy to have them. Uh, but it's, it, it's uh, to understand the complexity, uh, as, as you also mentioned, the, the like we have I don't know, seven or eight infrastructure engineers, and we have 150 developers. And this 150 developers uh, deploying their changes all the time. We have like 50 deploys a day. And we have 80,000 customers who are using our uh, application 24 7. And under this cost, constant change and constant uh, uh, load to be able to migrate 
customers from one location to another, like Christian migrated over two last weeks, uh, how many, 30,000 30, customers? From, from one location to another, like just be able to live in this ever changing world is, I mean, is complicated, but it's possible. That's awesome, awesome, awesome accomplishment. Laren? Yeah, um, you know, surprisingly, one of the, the biggest benefits that we've gotten back from some of the, the other business units, um, CIOs, CTOs, is that um, when they come to the platform, it's actually the first time that they get to see what their true spend is in a single, single place. Like, they understand um, what their infrastructure cost is, what all those pieces that go into running their application for the first time, they actually get um, a lot of visibility into that and what their consumption is. And it's allowed them to create a lot of, um, you know, because of the platform, a lot of automation to help them control costs. And it's not something that they've been able to do before. It's not, you know, easily done when you have a bunch of mainframe or physical servers be like, oh, I need to I scale down or I need a right size. Um, in this environment, they've actually been able to do it, and um, that's been a very positive um, piece of feedback that we've gotten from the, the business unit leaders that they've been able to control these costs. Um, the other piece is it's um, actually been very stable. You know, internally, this is um, you know one of our biggest KPIs uh, that we measure against is is API availability, right? So we may have hardware failures, there may be individual failures, and some of the other uh, teams within GE Digital measure against those failures. Whereas, you know, when you're looking at cloud adoption or cloud technologies, having that API availability, um, and if you do lose a piece of, of your workload, you're able to go spin that up and have that availability there. Um, you know, we do use, um, we do partner with Rackspace, um, and, you know, I think for the last probably two or three quarters, we've very nearly hit 100% of API availability per quarter. And so one of the surprises when we go and talk to um, these, these business unit leaders and about the availability of cloud and what cloud means, um, you know, a surprising piece to them is, um, we label it as stability, right? The ability to um, put your workloads out on on these platforms and have it be resilient if it's if it's designed correctly, and then when you couple that with the um, transparency of what they're using and being able to control those costs, um, we've actually it's been a, a really surprising conversation, surprisingly positive conversation to have with those leaders about the platform. That's awesome. Uh, so we've got about four minutes left. I want to give you all one minute opportunity to kind of any advice that you'd give for any companies that are just beginning this or any application teams that are just starting to do a migration or a brand new build out of an application <coughs> onto a cloud platform. Sergey? So just be prepared to migrate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, Simon? Yeah. I would say think crazy. Uh, don't be traditional. Uh, this is the biggest learning that I had is uh, I went with a mindset of the traditional infrastructure, trying to build a modern cloud and define that everything is software defined. I don't have to really carry on lots of bag baggages to build a private cloud. So be disruptive. Think crazy. Learn. Um. I think the, the biggest piece of advice that I would have is um, if you're starting your journey or if you're even just a little bit down the journey is um, potentially go and, and seek help, right? And I, I mean that by get advice from others who have done it, talk about some of, like this panel, the struggles that they've had um, and help, try to find help in figuring out your journey to the cloud. There's a lot more um, or the digital transformation journey. There's a lot more to it than just being able to modernize an application and put it out on the cloud. There's, um, you know, we talked about some of the, the resiliency and, you know, you start talking about pipelines and some of those other pieces. Um, you're, usually most people are very tied 
closely to the application, it's hard to to think that bigger picture and get the broader view. Um, one of the successes that we've had within GE is um, being able to consult with those teams and, and help them with that bigger concept of uh, not only how do they modernize their application, but also how do they create that resiliency, how do they create the automation, um, potentially go into like a CI CD pipeline. You know, these are all mind blowing concepts for them. Um, and it's um, what I would say is if you're, if you're leading that, um, try to get some outside help. Bring in some new ideas, make sure that you're getting the full picture before you, you get too far down and you're really kind of uh, locked into where you're at with your, your transformation. Awesome. Well, guys, I'd like to really tell you I appreciate you getting up here. It takes a lot to kind of get up and talk about some of the stories. You never know if anything's interesting, so it's always a little bit nerve-wracking to you know, talk <laughs> about some of the things that you're experiencing and no one wants to kind of admit problems. So it does show quite a bit of vulnerability to get up and, and share those uh, trials and tribulations you go through. So I'd really like to thank you all, and I'd ask that we get a nice round of applause for all of our panelists. Thank you very much. Two minutes. Now we can go have beers. Oh. Wait, are beers at five or six? Dang it. Sorry, you got one more hour to you can have beers. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks.